you the bread to the whole church, which is the very body of Christ. We pray that you continue to bless our parish community. May all who gather in faith to listen to your word and celebrate your sacraments experience the presence of Christ. May our parish community joyfully go forth to all and to serve you and proclaim Christ's name to all those we encounter. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our celebrant will be our pastor, Father Morgan. Please rise as we begin. Our entrance hymn is number 552. Our organist is also going to grace us with his cantor abilities. <laughs> Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, Virgin, 
all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. The Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. days of joy which we keep in honor of the risen Lord and what we relive in remembrance we may always hold to in what we do for our Lord Jesus Christ your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. of the apostles. Some who had come down from Judea were instructing the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the Mosaic practice, you cannot be saved. Because there arose no little dissension and debate by Paul and Barnabas with them, it was decided that Paul, Barnabas, and some of the others should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders about this question. The apostles and elders, in agreement with the whole church, decided to choose representatives and to send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. The ones chosen were Judas, who was called on Sabbath, and Silas, leaders among the brothers. This is the letter delivered by them. The apostles and the elders, your brothers, to the brothers in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia of Gentile origin. Greetings. Since we have heard that some of our number who went out with any mandate from us have upset you with their teaching and disturbed your peace of mind, we have with one accord decided to choose representatives and to send them to you along with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, who have dedicated their lives to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are sending Judas and Silas, who will also convey this same message by word of mouth. It is the decision of the Holy Spirit and of us not to place on you any burden beyond 
those necessities, namely, to abstain from meat sacrificed to idols, from blood, from meats of strangled animals, and from unlawful marriage. If you keep free of these, you will be doing what is right. Farewell. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the book of Revelation. The angel took me in spirit to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. It gleamed with the splendor of God. Its radiance was like that of a precious stone, like jasper, clear as crystal, it had a massive high wall with 12 gates where 12 angels were stationed and on which names were inscribed the names of the 12 tribes of the Israelites. There were three gates facing the east, three north, three south, and three west. The wall of the city had 12 courses of stones as its foundation on which were inscribed the twelve names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb. The city had no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gave it light, and its lamp was the Lamb. The word of the Lord.
with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything, and remind you of all that I told you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You heard me tell you, I am going away, and I will come back to you. If you love me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it happens, that when it happens, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord. So our Gospel today is alluding to the Holy Spirit, where Jesus says, I will send another advocate to be with you. And uh, Philadelphia is one of the few dioceses that actually still has ascension on Thursday. Um, most dioceses in the United States have moved into the following Sunday, so a week from today, uh, most United States will have the ascension on Sunday. We in Philadelphia were stubborn, so we will keep our holy day on Thursday, and then we'll have, we'll be one of the few to celebrate the seventh Sunday of Easter a week from today. And so that's just a little hint that this Thursday is a holy day of obligation. And so our masses are 8 a.m., 12.05 p.m., and 7.30 p.m. What day? Thursday. Okay, now let's get to the Holy Spirit. So of course we'll look more closely at the Holy Spirit post-ascension, but I think one of the titles I want to look at, which I looked at this past week at the Daily Masses, was the, the title of Advocate. And in addition, uh, just for clarification, Paraclete. So Paraclete in the Greek means to stand beside. So the Holy Spirit is said to stand beside the church, stand beside each of us. And Advocate, the at least the literal translation would be, or literal understanding of it would be like a lawyer or a defender in court, and so the Holy Spirit is seen as a defender of the church, and reminded that Jesus says in another part of the Gospels, I will send another advocate, which means he's an advocate as well, so he's an advocate to the Father on our behalf, and then he says another advocate, and that's the Holy Spirit. I think sometimes we think that Pentecost is an isolated event, so it's something that happened in the upper room. 2,000 years ago, if you remember the description, there was wind and fire appeared above the heads of the apostles and Mary. And uh, we think of that as like a static image, but that was just the beginning of the sending of the Holy Spirit. The sending of the Holy Spirit was constant since then, so the Holy Spirit continues to be sent to the church until the end of time. So that's just the beginning of the sending of the Holy Spirit. And so today we had uh, the sending of the Holy Spirit in a particular way. We had uh, six new priests ordained at the Cathedral for Philadelphia this morning. So there was a sp specific sending of the Holy Spirit to them today. So we pray for them as they begin their journey uh, as priests. Just a little more about uh, this idea of the advocate. That word advocate in Greek is parakleton, which since Greek is applied language, means variously counselor, comforter, helper, or advocate. An advocate or counselor is one who speaks on our behalf or who offers us guidance. Through the description itself, sounds vaguely like an attorney, the connection is much deeper. So it does mean attorney or lawyer, but it's also a deeper meaning. The word uh, Satan means accuser, adversary, or one who opposes. We see Satan playing this role very explicitly in the book of Job, when Satan claims that Job only worships God because Job is so blessed. Here Satan is very much like a prosecutor, standing before God, the just judge, and claiming that all of humanity is guilty. And then later on, John 2 calls Jesus our advocate with the Father. But isn't the spirit the advocate? Indeed, 
Just as in baptism we are incorporated into Christ through the power of the Spirit, so too both the Son and Spirit are rightly called Advocate, the Spirit is the Spirit of Jesus. The Son is our Advocate, the Father, interceding for us, and the Spirit is our Advocate as Counselor, guiding us into the truth and testifying that indeed we belong to Christ, as St. Paul puts it so well in this letter to the Romans. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and of children there than heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if only we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified with him. And so we receive the Holy Spirit in a particular way of baptism, and then confirmation, and then in my case, holy orders. And so we have the Holy Spirit individually, we also have the Holy Spirit corporately as the whole church. St. Augustine says, Comforter, the title of the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, the Apostle applies to God. God that comforts those that are cast down comforts us. The Holy Spirit, therefore, who comforts those that are cast down is God. Let's be mindful of the work of the Spirit in our lives. We'll get a lot more than bonus points out of it. And then in closing, just some words from the uh, New Catechism regarding the role of the Holy Spirit in the Church. The mission of Christ and the Holy Spirit is brought to completion in the Church, which is the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit. This joint mission henceforth brings Christ faithful to share in his communion with the Father and the Holy Spirit. The Spirit re prepares humanity and goes out to them with his grace in order to draw them to Christ. The Spirit manifests the risen Lord to them, recalls his word to them, and opens their minds to the understanding of his death and resurrection. He makes present the mystery of Christ supremely in the Eucharist in order to reconcile them, to bring them into the communion with God, and that they much, may bear much fruit. And so the Holy Spirit obviously is probably the most mysterious of the three persons of the Trinity. Uh, sometimes it become almost unreal. And some of the symbols are uh, don't really do the Holy Spirit justice, although uh, we need symbols to kind of understand this great mystery. So we have the dove, fire, wind. Wind's very powerful, fire purifies. The dove is a sign of peace. Uh, but the bottom line is uh, the Holy Spirit is the bond of love between the Father and the Son. And so what we're asked to do today is just maybe have a little bit more of an understanding of the role of the Holy Spirit in being sent to the church now to the end of time, and also is the paraclete, the person of the Trinity that stands beside each of us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, for the Father of all angels, God from God, life from life, God from true God, begotten not made, but substantially the Father, through whom all things are made, for us men of our salvation, beginning out from heaven, by the Holy Spirit, to the Lord the Virgin Mary. Amen. For our Savior is crucified and Pontius Pilate. He suffered a death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, and records the scriptures. He ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have the way. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. I confess the baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. As sisters and brothers in Christ, let us pray for the needs of the church and those of the world. For the unity of the church, may God strengthen all members to proclaim the truth of the resurrection with commitment and courage. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civil leaders, may the gospel message encourage them in working for prosperity and peace for all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community, 
may the Holy Spirit continue to empower us into saying yes to what God asks of us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For the victims of the mass shooting in Buffalo, New York, their families and the local community, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For the sick, may God's healing power restore them to full health of body and mind. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For those who have died, mark with the sign of faith. May they come to share in the glory of the Father. Let us pray to the Lord. Glory to God. The intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray in particular for the intentions of Tom and Josephine Goodowitz for whom this Mass is being offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Glory Eternal Father and giver of true peace, hear our prayers this day. We ask this to your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. As we bring forward the gifts, we'll sing, Christ be our light, number 598, Christ be our light.
Jesus Christ, and the power and work of the Holy Spirit, you like all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself from the rising of the sun to the setting, a pure sacrifice to be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly employ by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration. They may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, he broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many in the of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. But we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognize that the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. We make less eternal offering to you as we obtain an inheritance for your elect, especially for the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, and the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs. St. Isaac, Job, to all the saints with whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. In this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. We please confirm the faith and charity of the Church on earth through your servant Francis our Pope and Nelson our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people who have gained your hope. So graciously the prayers of this family who have summoned before you, in your compassion, merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Our departed brothers and sisters, all who are pleasing to you in the passing of this life, with kind admittance to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, who will bestow in the world all that is good. We will give it with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Sin and safe from distress as we the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, and your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin and the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
called him that takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to suffer of the Lamb. The word of that word, the ancient entry of my river, poison of the word, my soul shall be healed. to receive, we'll say one bread, one body. Break the bread for three, three, seven.
C.C. Thornton for how to nominate a parishioner for three openings on the pastoral council. Deadline for nominations is May 31st at 2 p.m. The election will take place in June. Please check out the outdoor courtyard that can be accessed by the parish hall. This area was renewed and upgraded by Marco Zaffamon as his Eagle Scout, Scout project. Thanks to Marco and all who helped him with this project. Join us for a coffee social sponsored by the Pastoral Council immediately after the 5 p.m. Mass on May 21st and all Masses on Sunday, May 22nd. Thursday, May 26th is Ascension Thursday, a holy day of obligation. There will be three Masses, 8 a.m., 12.05 p.m., and 7.30 p.m. Please refer to the bulletin for other announcements. In terms of the refreshments in the hall, May 21st, that's today. If you're all welcome to go over after that, so please stand for the closing prayers. Let us pray. Almighty, ever living God, who restores to eternal life the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of the saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. St. Michael the Archangel, the Mass is our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke and be humbly praying, and do thou, who is the heavenly host, the power of God, have sent for us safely, and all the evil spirits, the power of thy world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. We'll close our celebration singing, Rejoice, the Lord is King, number 735 in Breaking Bread. 735. <laughs>